Hello guys, Haruna here. In this uh, video, we're going to take a look at how you can create a um, network topology on VMware Workstation. What I've installed here is uh, VMware Workstation 14 Pro, which uh, is the latest version of VMware Workstation at the moment. Okay, I got this from vmware.com that's uh, the official website and uh, when you go to the download page you can see that 14.0 is the latest version they have this the topology we're going to work with i designed this on uh, a visio and i've got three operating systems installed windows xp which is pretty old of course and uh, ubuntu linux and uh, the other one is Community Enterprise Operating System, which is a Red Hat based uh, Linux OS. These are the IP addresses we're going to use in creating our simple topology. Mind you, this uh, LAN segment we're going to create. Sorry, so it simply not, means I don't see any matches in your each operating system, that's each workstation, will be able to communicate with the internet and they should be able to send and receive data across the network that's um, this windows xp pc should be able to communicate with the ubuntu pc and ubuntu should be able to communicate with uh, centos linux operating system so let's uh, jump right into it now obviously the first thing you should do is uh, install the operating system if you are new to this then all you need to do is uh, create just go on create a new virtual machine installation is uh, pretty straightforward like it's a next next finish kind of thing so i don't think i have to go through that anyway you just have to specify everything just like a physical machine like you specify the size of your RAM, the operating system you, you intend to install. Okay, let's let's just uh, do a quick typical install. So now if you have, if you're installing from a disk, you select disk. If it's uh, image, you select image, you choose the operating system you want to install, the location where it's, it's kept and just next, you specify the RAM and everything. I skipped that stage because I already have my operating systems installed. At the moment, I do have Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, that's the community enterprise operating system, which is also a Linux uh, operating system. And uh, I do have Ubuntu, Windows XP. For this uh, lab, we're going to use just three of the operating systems. That's uh, Windows, Ubuntu, and uh, CentOS. So what we need to do is just go on each PC, for example, the Windows XP. That's after installation. You can see that uh, I have given this PC 512 MB of RAM. It has uh, one processor, 40 GB hard disk. So what's interesting here is um, the network adapters. You need to have two network adapters since one network adapter will be used to communicate with the local LAN and the other will be used to communicate to the internet. That's through the host operating system. In this case, uh, Windows 10, that's what I'm using here. So after installation, we need to add a new network adapter. I have two network adapters. So on the first network adapter, which is which has been added to it has been assigned to a LAN segment so if you click on that you can see i have network adapter one then network adapter two network adapter the first one is uh, connected to the LAN segment this where everything really happens being able to communicate with other pieces on the LAN means all the pieces have to be on the same LAN segment I have created this LAN segment, Harun's VM LAN. You can create more segments or you can remove or rename a LAN segment. You can create a new one. This simply, this is like creating a switch where all other operating systems on 
the uh, VMware workstation can communicate with each other. So each interface that is connected to the same LAN segment can communicate with any other interface, just like a switch. Just think of this like a switch. Okay, uh, the network adapter 2 is not, so it's going to share the host IP address. As you can see here, it used to uh, share the host IP address. If the host is connected to the internet, then any PC that is sharing its IP address should be able to do same, should be able to connect to the internet. So configuration is same for this other PC, Ubuntu. Okay, I have my memory 2 gig uh, RAM. I have uh, two processors, 30 GB and everything, two interfaces as well. One for internet connectivity, the other one for the local LAN. Same thing with the um, Community Enterprise Operating System centers. 2 gig for uh, 2 gig memory for processors. Mind you, it doesn't really matter. The specification you need, you just need something that can hold the operating system. That's uh, a, a specification that would work without any issues. But what's, what I'm interested in is this part. That's the network connectivity. So that same thing, uh, one interface should be set as NAT, then the other one should be set to connect to the LAN segment. So if you click on this, that's the LAN segment. It's connected to LAN segment. Which LAN, LAN segment is that? Harun, Harun's uh, VM LAN. So we've set that to connect to. So let's check. This also connected to a LAN segment. So which LAN segment is that? So Harun's VM LAN. The Windows XP, let's see. Um, let's see, it's connected to a LAN segment. So that's like connecting to this switch, this switch right here. That's so now let's power on all our devices. The Windows XP is coming on. Let's see, power on the Ubuntu. Let's power on. Let's power on uh, the Community Enterprise Linux operating system. So Ubuntu is coming on. Okay, Windows XP is loading as well. So we're going to wait to see. Okay, the installation has uh, completed that. Uh, I have all the operating systems up and running. Windows XP is working just fine. Uh, Ubuntu and um, my community enterprise CentOS, that's the Linux. Mind you, this uh, Linux has no GUI that I didn't install it to work with uh, the GUI graphical interface. So now let's see. Uh, let's just verify our IP address. So let's say I have config here. You can see, okay, I can see that one interface. I can only see the loopback interface of, it means my interface is down. Let's see. Uh, let me try bringing that up. Mm, what do we have here? Okay, second interface. So let's bring it up. I have, I have up. This the interface was okay. I have up. CFG. One six. I have C. C. F. C. F. G. One six. Let's bring that up. It's trying to determine the IP information. Okay. It's done. Okay, let's repeat that for 
the other interface, the phone interface, that's three. These are the two interfaces. That's one is connected to the internet and the other is connected to the LAN segment. So now we can do uh, IF config to see what we have. Okay, now we have uh, three interfaces. One is the loopback interface and the other one is the one that's connected to the internet. Then I have 192.168.1.2 which is my local, this is the CentOS Community Enterprise OS, so it should have 192.168.1.2 from our topology in Visio, CentOS.1.2, okay, that's fine. Then Ubuntu, let's see what we have. Let's see what we have here. Open terminal. So, I need to be, I hope I get, okay, anyway, I can do that as a user here. Okay, we have uh, ETH1, you see, we have two interfaces, ETH1 uh, and, ETH0 and ETH1, so this, the NAT interface, then this, the one with the static IP address, that's 192.168.1. 1.0.1.3 that's the ubuntu the ubuntu pc where do we have that okay the ubuntu pc it should be dot 1.3 so let's modify this dot 1.3 slash 24 then the last pc we have is uh, windows xp Add the shortcut to the command prompt here with uh, uh, IP config. We can see what we have for on the Windows PC. So what do we have? We're connected to the internet here, and then we have 1.1.11. Okay, I think we are good to go. So how do we test to see what's happening? To see connectivity, I think uh, ping is the easiest way we can test. So since we know the IP addresses already, we can just start uh, by pinging from host to host to see if they are communicating. And if there's communication, then files can be shared. Of course, so let's see from now I'm on this PC that's on the Windows XP. Let's try pinging Ubuntu PC, which is 192.168.1.3. 192.168.1.3. So let's say ping 192.168.1.3. You hit enter, you can see that it's uh, successful. So you have uh, you've established communication between those uh, two pieces. Then we can ping uh, 192.168.1.2, which is the CentOS server I have there. So and 168.1.2 you can see that's uh, successful as well okay that's uh, good so far now let's see if we're able to communicate to go online i have a firefox browser here let's see if we can go to the internet using the other interface which has been set to NAT. we should be able to communicate with uh, devices on the internet, like we should be able to go online to do stuff. Okay, let's, before that comes up, uh, we can try on the Ubuntu PC, we can try pinging uh, the Windows XP, ping uh, 192.168.1.11, which is the IP address of the Windows PC. Obviously, it's uh, going through, that's fine. Then we can ping uh, the CentOS server, which is at dot, uh, 1.2. Okay, that's fine too. That's going through. Okay, on the CentOS server, we can also do same. We can test to see if if there is a communication. Uh, okay. Windows PC has an IP address, so for 192.168.1.11, hit enter, that's successful. 
the other that's the ubuntu pc has dot one dot three so one and two dot one six eight dot one dot three hit enter okay that's that's perfect okay so we have communications so let's to test the communication communications with the internet on this uh, pc that doesn't have gui that's the centos server we can simply ping somewhere on the internet like uh, google for example so uh, ping www.google.com hit enter let's see what happens if it goes through and i guess we have oh it's like we've lost connection to the internet on the host operating system let me try connecting back yeah unknown host that's why it's saying can't connect to this network anyways let's let's go back to windows the windows xp okay firefox is up and running but the host operating system is not connected to the internet so well let's see i've got issues with my internet connectivity here let, let me try connecting to see what happens because we can't go online without uh, having the host operating system connected to the internet let me try and fix that okay so now that the host operating system is connected to the internet we're going to try connecting to the internet on on the guest operating system so uh, we can just go to Google and see what happens. So you can see we're on the Windows uh, XP operating system. That's one of the guest OS on the VMware. It's connect. It's been able to uh, connect to the internet now. Uh, the the Ubuntu uh, desktop OS. Let's use the browser here. Oh, we don't even need, we can just, just ping, we can just ping directly from here. Okay, you can see it's going through successfully. Then finally, on CentOS, on CentOS uh, box, we can just ping google.com from here. It says host unreachable. Okay, so there's probably something wrong with the configuration here. What do we have here? What do we have? Okay, let's try in ping uh, google.com. Okay. It's it's really not going through. That the central server isn't connecting to the internet. You can try to fix that as well. Okay, now on the community enterprise uh, Linux, what I did was to bring the interface down and bring it up back up. That's just like uh, restarting the interface. Now we're able to go to the internet, uh, google.com. Everything is working just fine now. So you can see from this setup, we have three operating systems that's three that are active at the moment and they can communicate with uh, each other and they can also go online based on uh, this setup this pc can communicate with this this to this and uh, to they can also go online that's to send and receive any data on the internet so this is it and i would like you i would like to thank you for viewing and please be sure to like share and subscribe for more interesting videos thank you